What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to get Lubuntu up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. Now this is pretty simple to do. The first thing we need to do is actually install Ubuntu server to a micro SD card. And then from within Ubuntu server, we can install Lubuntu. Now, one of the main reasons I like running Lubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 4 is the desktop interface we're using here. This is not GNOME. This is actually known as LXQT, and it works much better on these smaller single board computers. These are lower powered computers, and GNOME seems to struggle a little bit on them. With the recent updates to GNOME and Ubuntu, it's been working pretty well, but I think LXQT is just a nice, clean desktop interface for Linux, and it works really well on the Pi 4, especially with an overclock. So Lubuntu is based on Ubuntu, but instead of using GNOME, we have the LXQT desktop. Everything functions really great on the Pi, even YouTube playback. 720p and up is a bit iffy with some videos, but overall it seems to function pretty decently. There's a lot of stuff that's pre-installed with Lubuntu. We can also even install RetroArch if you want to. You can do it from Terminal or the Package Manager. Before we get started, there's a few things you're going to need. Obviously, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 4. I recommend at least the 2 gigabyte model, but if you have the 4, it's going to be even better. A decent micro SD card. Now, 8 gigs will work, but I do recommend the 32. The price difference isn't that much nowadays on Amazon. I'll leave some links in the description. The next thing I recommend is an Ethernet connection to the Raspberry Pi, because when we install it, it's just going to make it a lot easier. And finally, we'll need another PC. This could be a Linux PC, Windows, or a Mac. We need to download the Ubuntu server image for the Pi 4, flash it to an SD card to get that up and running on the Pi 4. So if you're interested in getting Lubuntu up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using a Windows 10 machine to get the Ubuntu server flashed to the SD card, and we're going to move over there now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Ubuntu server installed on our SD card, then we can move over to the Pi and get Lubuntu installed. So first things first, I have my SD card inserted into my PC. I'm just using a simple USB to micro SD card reader. It's a 32 gigabyte card. We're going to need to open up a browser. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. We need to get Ubuntu server for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now there's a couple versions to choose. 18.04, this is the long term support, or 19.10. We also can choose between 32 bit or 64 bit. Now for me, I'm just going to go with 1910, 64-bit, but you can choose any of the other ones if you'd like to. It's going to start the download. Now we need to download an application to allow us to flash Ubuntu server to our micro SD card. And we're going to be using Etcher for this. This works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to grab the portable version. Once both of my downloads are finished up, I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access. All right, so now that I have Etcher and my image downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and flash this image to the SD card. It's really easy to do. This is the image we downloaded. We're gonna leave it just like it is. It can be zipped because Etcher is gonna take care of everything for us. We're gonna launch Etcher. From within Etcher, we're gonna select the image we just downloaded. Remember, it's zipped and I place it on my desktop. Right here, Ubuntu 19.10. This is the pre-installed server. Next, make sure you have the correct SD card chosen, and flash. Etcher's now going to flash that image to the micro SD card so we can boot it up on our Raspberry Pi 4. Give this a little time to finish up. The speed really depends on how fast your USB port is and your SD card, so it could take a little while if it's a bit slow. All right, the SD card is finished flashing. We can go ahead and close these warnings down. But before we move over to the Pi, I usually always do an overclock. Now the stock clocks on this are 1.5, but I usually go to 2 GHz, and that's the max you can go with Ubuntu Server or Lubuntu. Now it's very easy to do. We've just flashed the SD card. I'm going to pull it from my PC and then plug it right back in. Now I've done a full video on overclocking. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. But real quick, we're going to do it here. I'm just going to cancel these warnings. And what we want to look for is system boot, and inside of here, we're going to find config. I do recommend using Notepad++ instead of the regular Notepad built into Windows. I'll leave a link for this in the description. We're going to open it up, and at the very bottom, we're going to go down a line. And we're going to do an overclock. Over voltage equals 6. This is for the CPU. 
and arm frequency equals 2000. This will bring us from 1.5 to 2 GHz on the Raspberry Pi 4, but remember, you need good cooling. File, save, and we can close this all down. So our SD card is now ready. We're gonna move over to the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna insert it into the Pi, plug in my HDMI, power, and keyboard. So the first boot's not gonna take that long, but remember we are connected over ethernet. We need to log in and install Ubuntu from within Ubuntu server. Give it some time to get to the login prompt. And when we're here, the login is Ubuntu. Password is also Ubuntu. We now need to change the password, so remember what you're gonna change it to, but we have to put in the current password first. Now we'll create our new password. Make sure it's at least six characters long. We'll have to confirm the new password. And we now have our new password set. Now from here, we're gonna do a quick update. And remember, we're connected online over ethernet, so we're gonna type in sudo apt git update. Press enter. Now it's time to install Ubuntu. For this, we're gonna type in sudo apt git install Lubuntu desktop. Press enter. It's gonna start the process and it's gonna ask us to confirm one more thing manually. So just stay by the pie. From here, we're gonna choose the first option, GDM3. Just press enter on your keyboard, and now it's gonna automatically finish up the install for us, so you can walk away and get a cup of coffee if you need to. Now keep in mind, this could take a little while to install, up to 20 minutes, but with a decent internet connection and an overclocked Pi, it shouldn't take you but about 10 to 12. All right, so when it's finished up, you'll have the blinking cursor here. We're gonna type in sudo reboot. Press enter and your Pi will reboot. And here we are, we're at the login screen. Our username is Ubuntu, so we're gonna click on this. This little gear icon, we need to make sure we choose Lubuntu if we wanna boot into the Lubuntu desktop. And every time we boot up, this will always be checked so we don't have to do it again. Now we're gonna put in the new password we created when we were installing Lubuntu. Sign in. And you're now running Lubuntu on your Raspberry Pi 4. So like I mentioned, we don't have to choose the Lubuntu at login. Every time we log in, it'll bring us to the Lubuntu desktop. So this is very reminiscent of a Windows operating system. Down here in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our app bar. There's a lot of good stuff pre-installed here. We do have the full LibreSuite built in. Internet, Firefox is pre-installed, but you can install Chromium if you'd like. Office, here's the Office section. Sound and video, VLC is already pre-installed. System tools, we have preferences here. And if you'd like to install more applications, you can easily do it from terminal, or we can go back to system tools here and go to the package manager. From here, we can search for what we want. Let's say RetroArch. Right click, mark for installation. And that's automatically also gonna choose the RetroArch assets that we need. Now we'll just click apply changes, put in our password, and it's gonna install it for us. And there you have it. So now we just installed RetroArch. We'll go to games, here's RetroArch. Very easy to install different applications. You can use the package manager or use terminal. This is a very lightweight operating system. It seems to work really well on the Raspberry Pi, especially with the two gigahertz overclock. We have full access to the internet from Firefox. You can add more apps down here if you need to. 
and just head over to YouTube. And there you have it. So you can go ahead and browse the web, use LibreOffice, play some retro games. It's a great little operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4, and I really appreciate you guys watching. Personally, I do prefer running the LXQT desktop as opposed to GNOME on the single board computers. These small ARM chips function really well with LXQT when you compare it to the speed of GNOME. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.